the Mark III Golf GTI. If ever there was a Hubnut Golf GTI, perhaps this is it. Um, they're rubbish, aren't they? Well, let's find out. So we have actually seen this Golf before. It was at the Bromley pageant um, because the Classic Car Buyer team were having a battle to buy cars for 500 quid and prove they weren't rubbish. The sort of editorial I dream of, to be honest. Jeff, who's the uh, news editor on Classic Car Buyer, I think, um, ended up with his 500 quid Golf, which he um, bought at a party um, slightly drunk and hadn't driven it, but um, reckoned it was probably all right and has driven it since and reckons it actually is all right. It's clearly an evolution of the classic golf shape. Um, it's parked slightly in the bushes here um, because I wanted to do a test from cold. I don't want any, any impression about this car before I drive it. So we'll crawl into the undergrowth and look at the chunky rear lamp clusters and uh, the plastic wheel arch extensions, the alloy wheels, the paint that's actually really, really sound for the most part. Uh, nice metallic green color. Um, I, I prefer the Mark III to the Mark IV. I like separate indicators. So I, I think these are very attractive cars, especially in metallics. Uh, obviously I'm not a fan of the Aero Blade uh, wipers. That's just personal choice. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the front fog lights either. Those look like the blanking plugs. Um, but obviously it's a bit scruffy and a bit um, dirty in places because it's a 500 quid car and no one's going to clean it. Um, door check. Yeah, a bit of extra weight added to the doors, no doubt, to make things better. Um, inside, um, as you can see, um, acres of black plastic. Um, but you know, it's a bit of color on the seats and the smell, oh. I really wish I could describe the smell. But if you imagine stale socks um, that should have been washed several weeks ago, um, that may have been used by sportsmen or women. So first impressions, nice, clear, concise dials, easy to read, um, nice swooping, curving um, dash top, which isn't reflecting too badly in the windscreen. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got um, hazard lights there. A nice, quiet, understated tick. That's all good. Um, are these rear? Oh yeah. Oh, one touch even on the rears. That's a bit fancy. Full approval given. Um, that'll be the override for that. It looks like I've probably got an immobilizer I'm gonna have to play with. Glove box with cup holders and you know, a certain amount of service history. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it does a lot of shiny black plastic in here and the, the steering wheel is not attractive. But then when airbags first became a thing, steering wheels generally were not attractive. Uh, there's no exception. Uh, nowhere to put my clutch foot, but uh, pedal spacing is otherwise okay. The seats have decent bolsters to them, gear change. Oh, we're rolling off. Someone left it with a handbrake off. Um, yeah, it, it's okay. I've, I've been told the linkages are tired and I think that's probably a fair assumption. And uh, heat controls. There we go, they seem to work. Um, change that to there. Um, right, um, let's see what it's like in the back. Well, here in the back, um, I'm joined by the parcel shelf. Um, but um, I will put that in the back when I can get in the back. Um, the headliner is um, a little bit saggy, so he's resting on my head, but if that's not happening, um, there's a good amount of headroom. Um, so all is well there. Decent amount of knee room as well, feet under the seats, quite comfortable. So um, yeah, well, I wouldn't rave about the rear seating position, but um, it's absolutely fine. Good times. So here is the heart of the beast. Um, this is a GTI, but it has a two liter, eight valve, single cam engine, producing 115 brake horsepower, which doesn't necessarily sound like a recipe for burning up the road to me. Um, lots of space for working on the engine. Um, although um, the inlet manifold and the exhaust are both on the back of the engine. So not entirely easy to get at. Um, cam belt easily done and apparently it had a change uh, just before purchase so um, on those 
ground, this was a 500 quid car that was well worth buying. Um, it's always good times when um, a cheap car has had the cam belt done because they can be um, expensive jobs because you kind of need to replace the tensioner and the water pump and everything while you're at it. But yeah, iron block by the look of it, um, alloy head. So far, so not very exciting. Oh yeah, that starter motor sounds a little tired. Right, um, we can usually rely on a Volkswagen to have good wipers. And there we go. In fact, they clear, yeah, they do an excellent job of clearing the screen. Um, no triangle of doom, very good overlap. Um, they look like slightly too large blades, to be honest, but they're doing a very good job, so all is well. Um, there we go, now I can see what's going on behind. We'll open this up for a bit of light. I uh, haven't found the sunroof switches yet. Oh, there we go. Maximum ventilation is achieved. Right, we'll just move forward and um, then I'm going to put the parcel shelf back in the boot where it should be. Or maybe I won't, maybe I'll just leave it there. And um, we'll go and have a drive uh, past some other fine vehicles. Oh, that's set a bit um, too far back. Is there height adjustment? Oh yes, there we go. Perfect. I like to sit a bit higher up, you see. Oh, that's a nasty column stalk. That doesn't feel nice. That feels a little more brisk than I perhaps expected. So yeah, I, I fully applaud them for doing a 500 quid car challenge because you know the very ethos of Hubna is how much fun you can have for very, very little, but not necessarily fun, also competent as well. Why should you spend over 100 quid every month on a car when one that costs 500 quid outright will do the job. And apparently the previous owner of this was inspired by a classic car buyer feature on how you could buy one of these for 500 quid. Um, so um, I quite like that circularity there. I was told to watch out for that gear linkage, but actually that seems fine to me. Oh yeah, been, been an eight valve engine. Um, it's got oodles of low down torque. Um, when they design multi-valve engines, they tend to require revs and be quite fussy below 2000 RPM, but this is pulling just fine. A simple rotating light control here on the right, uh, which you pull out for the fog lights, and, um, or pull out for the rear fog light, which means when you turn them off again, it automatically turns the rear fog light off. That was always quite a nice touch. So we're gonna have to put up with a fair bit of wind noise because it is, um, Quite hot here in the east of England. Just to many people, the Mark III Golf GTI is where it all started going wrong. They accused Volkswagen of laziness, of just um, living off the GTI namesake without necessarily delivering the excitement. And um, while people go mad about Mark I Golfs and Mark IIs, uh, yeah, they, the Mark III is not a popular car. Which I've never really understood. I mean, a Mark II Golf GTI, eight valve certainly, is not a particularly mind-blowing car. The Mark I was mind-blowing because that was the first time we really saw a fuel-injected, punchy engine in um, a small shopping wagon. So that was always gonna cause a certain amount of excitement. Yeah, Volkswagen well ahead of the hot hatch curve there. So yeah, the Mark 1's always gonna have that certain cachet. And of course, the Mark 1, styled by Giorgetto Giugiaro, stylist of the day whom it is. So um, it's got that cachet as well, whereas the Mark 2 is an evolution of that. Well, it is said that Giugiaro refused to let his name be used on the Mark 1 Golf because they used circular headlamps and he wanted square ones, but I have seen Mark 1 Golfs converted to square or rectangular headlamps 
and it just doesn't look right. So um, I'm sorry, Giorgetto. On that one, I think you were wrong and Volkswagen were right. So the Mark III Golf came in in 1991, 92, that sort of area. And um, yeah, it was a kind of just a natural progression as we moved up from um, Mark II to Mark III to Mark IV, the gentle evolution of the shape. And uh, that's really what sets the Golf apart. Oh, look at Fiat 500. Um, because the, um, the Golf has evolved in a way. Other cars just haven't. Sorry, there was a truck coming. Now you think of Vauxhall Astras, they haven't really evolved. Every now and then a new Astra comes along which looks nothing like the previous one. Oh dear. Impatient van man, not prepared to wait for a gently accelerating Fiat 500. To be fair, Fiat 500s do generally accelerate gently, they don't know any other way. It's a reminder of just how tiny the Fiat 500 is. Oh yeah, the ride is not the best, but to be fair, I'm not sure that's the car's fault. Oh, it's starting to rain. Perfect. Mist function? Yes. Yeah, I'd say the... Um, Overtaking punch is reasonable. Generally this is feeling a bit more sprightly than I expected, I think. This is quite a tricky road and um, it's uh, handling it fairly well. It's not Citroen smooth, but a few things are over this terrain. Citroens are very good on Fenland roads. And it feels like a car you could just keep on driving. The seats are perhaps a bit firm. Germans do like a fair, firm seat, uh, whereas I like French cars. Ugh, blooming magpies. And French cars tend to have softer seating. So it's much more my cup of tea. Yeah, it's got enough power for torque steer. And mild Ill illegality, um, allegedly, officer. But at the same time, the ride is um, pretty composed for something that is a little firmer than standard. <laughs> Look at the speedo. Yeah, this really is all right. You, you cannot be disappointed with this car for 500 quid. You can be disappointed with this. Yeah, very impressive. People who hoon around in hatchbacks, eh? What children? Oh, quite handy for getting out when there's a tiny, tiny little gap. Yeah, it's the mid-range where this car delivers. It's punchy, um, even at lower revs. So I'm gonna shut the sunroof, I can remember how to do that. Is there a tilt? Oh yeah, there we go. 3,000 revs at an indicated 70. So yeah, you could do this all day as well if you um, find yourself stuck on motorways rather than entertaining back roads. Oh, I heard a dashboard creak. Scrap it. Yep, decent coverage. Looks good. Rear wiper test complete. 
somehow I entirely failed to record a conclusion there. But um, you can kind of see my conclusions. But actually, it's really quite a nice car, the Golf GTI. Very usable, really nice sort of punchy mid-range power. And uh, I liked it a lot more than I expected, to the point that I was instantly scouring eBay for them, which is um, always a good sign. I mean, for the money, you cannot go wrong. That's a great car. And um, I think possibly of its rivals at the time, um, I think the Golf is probably the one I'd go for, to be honest. The Astra could tempt me, the Mark V Escort or Mark VI Escort, probably not so much. And um, But yeah, I, I, I liked it a lot. So what should I say? Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry this conclusion is re recorded somewhat later. And um, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. You're famous, George. You're on the internet.